Now joining us on the Fight Day set here in Philadelphia is a man who has had too many questions surrounding his belt for too long. Now he'll have the opportunity to finally settle the score with Gray Maynard once and for all at UFC 136 in October. East Coast native and current UFC lightweight champion, Frankie Edgar. Welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Thanks for having me. So here we go. It's coming up. Finally, once again, you got the fight booked with Gray Maynard. It's going to be in Houston in October. How excited are you to be able to finally get back in the cage and answer all the questions? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been too long in the making. You know, obviously we had the, the fight a long time ago. I took the loss, had the draw in January. I was supposed to fight in May, got injured. Now we get to finally settle the score in October. Let's talk about that fight back in January, UFC 125 in Las Vegas, kicking off 2011. It's a draw. Did the judges get it right or wrong? You know, uh, I've been getting this question a lot. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, it's in the past, October 8th. We're going to get to an- have oh, all the answers. Don't act like it does. I know it matters to you. Listen, of course I'm biased. You know, do I think I did enough in the last four rounds? I do. But, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter. You know, we're fighting again. That's that's all that matters to me right now. How badly were you hurt in the first round? I mean, you can see the fight. I, I yeah. was pretty banged up, um, you know, but I was able to hang on and, uh, and stay in there. Now, people say that it's a real testament to someone's attrition and their conditioning when they're able to recover that quickly. Is that what it was for you, or was it something else that made you pop back after that devastating first round and really be able to turn it on as quickly as the second round you know I don't know I just think it's my will to win you know uh, I, I definitely don't like losing you know not that anybody does but I think that's what drove me to, to you know to to find a way to bounce back and uh you know make it make it a make it a fight but uh I was lucky I had a really good corner and I, I feel like uh, was, it wasn't for them I wouldn't have made it through well, looking forward to this next fight with Gray Maynard. Um, there was talks for a while there that Gray Maynard may not get the immediate title shot uh, at you again after that draw at 125. Are you glad that Gray Maynard is getting the opportunity to step back in so you can settle this once and for all? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, last fight, it, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. You know, you walk away, I still had the belt, but I didn't get a win. So I, I want to have a definite decision and, and, you know, a definite winner and, and come out on top. Are you going to be a little bit more cautious in this fight, knowing that he's got some serious punching power, or does the game plan change at all? No, you know, I'm just going to do what I do and uh, try to focus on the things I, uh, that I think I can take advantage of. Uh, you know, I, I was aware of his power before. He just set it up nice, so i got to try to avoid that this time around. Now, there's been a lot of talk about your injuries, and actually we have a question for you from one of your fans. This is the Boost Mobile Be Heard fan cam. Let's take a look at what one of your fans had to ask. Megan Olivia here at the Octagon Nation in Philadelphia for UFC 133. I'm on the Boost Mobile Be Heard fan cam, and we've got a question for Frankie Edgar from a fan. What's your question? I uh, just want to know what's uh, been uh, most, I mean, the, the holdup. Uh, I know he's been injured quite a bit, and I just want to know a little bit uh, more specifically if you guys knew what uh, was going on with his injuries and such. Frankie, can you explain what happened? Yeah, um, you know, it was a couple things, actually. I, I had a bad back. Um, I had surgery, actually, when I was 18 years old. So uh, I had some issues in my back, but uh had a herniation, got an epidural, doing better. I also had a uh, popped cartilage in my ribs, but I'm, I'm 100%, man. I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so training camp, are you back in it now? Has it already begun? Yes, I am. Yeah, I've been at it pretty good for, uh, you know, four weeks, but, uh, you know, training camp the last couple weeks. There's been a lot of talk about you being a relatively small lightweight, and then you've got these super strong other lightweights that are in the division. You're on top of the heap, though, so it seems ridiculous to even talk about you ever considering moving weight classes, but I know that it's come up in the past, so I want to get the answer from you, being the man. Would you ever consider moving down to 145? You know, uh, I'm all about big fights, and uh, you know, if the big fights are at 45 or at 55, uh, I'm cool with all that. So you're leading up to this fight, once again, happening down in Houston. You get to settle the score once and for all. Tell us about this training camp so far. How do you feel like it's been going now that you're able to get back in there and start to mix it up with your boys? Yeah, yeah I feel great. You know, it's definitely early on, but uh, everything's definitely going according to plan. And, uh, you know, just got to make sure we uh, stay healthy and uh, finish strong. There's been a lot of guys in the lightweight division that have been going, yes, come on, feel better, I want that belt. And it's been stacking up. The lightweight division, I think, is safe to say, probably the most stacked division right now with contenders in the UFC. Looking at the other players in the division, who do you think is right there in the mix and should be? Uh, You know, obviously, uh, Jim Miller, he's been in there. Melvin's been doing great. Um, ben Henderson, you know, there, there, there's a handful, man. I, I I can't even think of all of them. I get nervous thinking about all of them. But, uh, <laughs> no, and, uh, you know, there's so many good guys. It's such an evenly contested weight class. It's it's stacked. I think all the weight classes are stacked at this point. But 55 is so evenly contested. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm ever going to run out of opponents. Final thing for you today, BJ Penn has moved up to 170 pounds mostly thanks to you, and he's competing at a high level. He's fighting Carlos Conte at UFC 137. That fight's happening in Las Vegas in October as well, a little bit later in the month. Uh, What are your thoughts on BJ Penn versus Carlos Conte? 
I think it's a great fight, man. Carlos definitely possesses uh, some problems for BJ. He's a, he's a tough dude. You know, he's got good hands, good stand up, and uh, he could push the pace. You know, but BJ again, you know, he's a, he's a legend, and um, obviously we've seen what he's doing. You know, John Fitch is the number two guy in the world at 170, and uh, he fought him tough as tough as hell. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. All right, he's the champ. Thanks so much for being with us today, uh, thanks man. Thanks for having me. And uh, as a fan, I'm so glad that you're healthy again. Can't wait to see you back in me there. Me too. Me too. Thank you.